Hello everybody and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. And today I'm gonna show you some cool stuff you can do with fairings. Fairings, of course, the newest addition in uh, Kerbal Space Program 1.0. In uh, oh, oh, speaking of ways to protect your cargo. So as you can see here, I've already built a probe and I'm building a fairing around it. You move your mouse and uh, the fairing follows your mouse and when you click uh, when it lights green you can make some different parts in the fairing. And yeah this looks really stupid but I just wanted to show you how those fairings work. When you move your mouse over the fairing it opens up so you can see your cargo inside and move some stuff in there around. So let's build a real fairing around that. Yeah looks good some conic fairing yeah and let's try this one out shall we so we're on the launch pad and boom there's the fairing opening and we can start our ascent well usually you do that in space so there's another way to use fairings and it's called interstage fairing that's basically what they did on the Apollo mission. Well, a little bit more complex than what I'm going to show you now. So, for instance, if we have a spaceship with some parts that need protecting from atmospheric heating or other drag effects, for instance, like this solar panels, and let's put some science experiments on there, and also, yeah, another one. And what else could we put on there? Yeah, batteries. Let's take this one. Okay, so these things would heat up in the atmosphere and also cause drag when you want to ascend. So let's use another fairing, but this time we're not making a cone or something like that. We're making a straight tube and when the indicator turns blue, you can connect it to another part. So we've already made our interstage fairing. Now the only thing we need an engine is uh, an engine and we have ourselves a spaceship. And here it goes straight up in the air. And we're releasing the fairing and voila. There we go, a spaceship with interstage fairings. Of course, no use uh, doing that in the atmosphere, but this was for demonstration purposes only. So I've uh, mentioned the Apollo mission and they did some fairing around the lander and pulled the lander out with their command module. So I'm going to recreate this real quick here in Kerbal Space Program. We need a docking port and another, another docking port for the lander. Let's make really a really quick lander module. Another tank on there. Another engine, where's the engines? There are the engines. Big engine, should be enough. Some landing gear. Landing gear, landing gear, there we go. And then we have to finish this up with a decoupler and put some fairing around it. Where are the fairings? I put them here in my custom group for aerodynamic stuff. And I'm using the biggest one, the 3.75 meter. And you have seen here the blue indicator, there it goes. So we have connected a fairing to the engine uh, staging. And yeah, let's see how this works. Well, spoiler alert, unfortunately it does not work as well as I had intended. So if I decouple this here, should have put an action group to it. Yeah, the fairing kind of breaks apart and everything looks weird because uh, the connection to the engine is not as smooth that you could uh, pull it out. It's, well, it behaves like it was staged or, well, it is destroyed. Let's keep it at that. But there is another way and it involves using, well, you might call it an exploit and it involves heavy part clipping. So, for uh, our part clipping purposes, we of course need a cubic octagonal strut, the mainstay of any advanced uh, rocket construction. 
then we also need fat decoupler the biggest one there is and we put it inside of our craft yeah we can do that and we are going to do that right now just make sure it stays right in the center uh, there we go and then we have to move it a little bit upwards so it clears the lander more or less so if the decoupler does not move uh, as far as you like just pick uh, the cubic octagonal strut and then you have a way more range of movement now we build our fairing just up until the decoupler then we're going to launch our craft this is important because if you don't do that and revert and you do what i'm going to do now which is moving the decoupler the fairing would well it would not uh, be possible to do what i'm going to do now so we're moving the decoupler down a little bit up it should be flush with the top of the fairing the top of the decoupler should be flush with the top of the fairing looks good and now we need another fairing base, so we're using the 2.5 meter fairing, but turn it around so it's upside down, yep, yeah, that looks good. Now we build the fairing and we have to connect it again to the decoupler, well this looks weird. No, uh, the angle is a little bit tricky in this case, but it is manageable. Let's just try to find that blue indicator so I can show you what's up. So once again, start this vessel and revert to the VAB. If you would of course decouple this decoupler, the entire uh, spacecraft would explode. But when we take away the decoupler, we have a two-staging tubular uh, fairing. So this is uh, quite interesting. And if you try it out, there you go. It separates beautifully and you can pull your lander out of the long fairing. Unfortunately, I forgot to put any RCS control units on the command module. So yeah, docking would be very difficult with this one. Yeah, no, that's, that's no use at all. But, fortunately, I've already prepared something. This is my, well, Apollo 12 mission, more so to speak. And, of course, it has a lander module and a command service module. And we're going to look at the top stage of that rocket right now. There we go. In space. I should really use some action groups and not fill inside of the rocket to find the docking port let's decouple it then we have to activate our RCS thrusters where are they there they are and yeah I should activate the monopropellant because I deactivate that during launch when I'm using Werner engines so the monoprop does not be uh, get used during the ascent phase so control from docking port Let's switch this around, line up those docking ports and I'm going to show you another neat trick, which is using the decoupler as, well, sort of propulsion. There we go, and the ejection force of the decoupler pushes us in the right direction to dock with the lander module. There we go, we're docked. And now we can pull it out of the fairing, just Activate that decoupler over here. Kablamo. And let's just pull it out with our RCS system until it's free of that nice little tubular staging. Uh, fairing, of course, not staging. And there we go. We have our lander module extracted from the fairing. But there is a slight problem, because KSP 1.0 and also 101 and 102 have a bug when things get out of fairings which have not been deployed. Yeah, you can't activate their engines. And even if I would switch back to that craft, deploy the fairing, the engine would still not work. 
So what else is there? I can use service bays as well to protect cargo. Service bays, of course, some kind of miniature cargo bay, so to speak. So you can put some instruments in there, probe cores, uh, science experiments, antennas, solar panels, whatnot, to protect them from heat and uh, to reduce drag. You may have remembered my orbital drop pod where I have abused a service bay for transporting two kerbals. Looking comfy, aren't they? But I've also expanded on that idea and created this uh, lander which can transport four kerbals in this configuration to lathe and back. And without those external engine, it only weighs 14 tons and it can land on pretty much anything except for, well, lathe, Tylo and Eve maybe. And of course Kerbin. Well, it could land on Kerbin, I guess. It has a thrust to weight ratio of greater than one, so it could be possible. And inside we have our science experiments and solar panels. And of course, seats for fur kerbals. But what else could you do with service bays? I've heard about a way to use them as sort of cargo bay for VTOL engines, VTOL being vertical takeoff and landing. So let's build a small plane real quick. Nah, not liking that one. Nope. Let's see. Do it this way. This is really just hobbling together parts so I can test it out. I'm not really trying to make it look good or anything, just trying to make it work. Let's use some tail fins and also some canards in front. Then we have to fix the landing gear and assign some action groups. Let's see how this flies, shall we? And immediately after activating the vertical engine, I realized if you look at uh, one of the read readouts on the top from a Kerbal engineer that the thrust to weight ratio of that single vertical engine is not really enough to get this thing in the air because it should be greater than one and it just isn't. But we can use this as well, so to speak, a quick takeoff vehicle. Well, that works as well. So if we close the cargo bay and shut up down the engine, we can use this as a regular airplane. So let's see how we can get back and land, maybe. Opening up the cargo bay again. And we'll try to land over there back at the runway. No, 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 yes, and there we go. No, we don't. Yeah, well, we could improve, improve on that, I guess. For instance, by uh, removing the turbojets, which are heavy, and add some regular jet engines, which are not as heavy. So the thrust to weight ratio rises, and we can use it as a real vertical uh, plane. Vertical takeoff and landing plane, VTOL. So just trying to make it spool up. Spool up, spool up, spool up. And lift off. Yes, we are rising in the air. And yeah, so this is proof you can use service base also to produce VTOL planes. Well, I personally don't think they look very good, but yeah, what do I know? Just be careful not to pitch down too much when you're not high enough. And you can enjoy those uh, launch effects, those little volumetric clouds that are produced when you're close to the surface. And yeah, when you make the mistake to close the cargo bay, of course the engine exhaust can't get out and the plane crashes like this. Thanks for watching.
goodbye.